Our next guest believes that even if the partnership doesn't work, parenting still can. I'd like to welcome Jill Darcy. She's got a great book out. It's called Parenting with the X Factor. X being the operative word. You don't mean the other kind of X Factor, but very clever play on words. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell me about the book um, and also the centre that you've sent up, the complex yeah. centre. And, and what prompted that for you? Well, first and foremost, I'm a parent and I'm a divorced parent, so I've gone through this and I realise how much people actually struggle to work out when you've gone through divorce, which means irreconcilable differences, then how do you actually get on for the good of the kids? Mm. And so taking away how you divorce and whether you have to see them again and all that, just focusing on what do we do to raise great children when the marriage no longer works. So tell me about your um, foundation and how the book sort of ties in with that. So I started writing the book been encouraged by so many people, put it down on paper so we can all read it. So I started writing it and I realised it's such a huge topic and there's so much that needs to be done long term. Mm. But then we've set up what's called Complex Family Foundation and that is an online facility where people can get online books, courses, e-books, everything there. All to do with parenting with your ex. Yes. Now, everyone's going to say this to you, so much easier said than done. I know so many people who are divorced or separated, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, but the partner, be it female or male, are just a nightmare. Yes. They will do everything they can to make the other parent's life a misery. Yes. And I know these people have felt the only option is to go to court, mm. and then $40,000 later, mm -hmm. they get the visitation rights. Will you? Will your book help that extent? Yes. Yeah, it does. It's... One of the things that we are led to believe is that when you go and see a lawyer, you're led to believe that there's only two things to work out in this, and that's property and custody. And they're wrapped up in words of, you know, like routines and money and all these things. Basically, what I'm saying is that is a piece of the puzzle, but what you need to do is have all these strategies and techniques and tools to know how to raise children, even with the most obnoxious X. Yes. Because they can be really obnoxious. It's kind of sport for them. <laughs> and so what we're doing is we're trying yeah. to say there's ways that you can remain being this fantastic parent, being a wonderful example on how to handle these issues, so then your children are left with the opportunity of loving and choosing for themselves. What are some of the big points that you make in the book in terms of making sure that the kids do not have bad impressions of their father or mother, the other parent? Give them the freedom to choose their relationship with their other parent. Don't try and enforce what you believe mm. the other parent is. So give them the opportunity to choose. And that means patience. It means time. Because if you can give them a great, stable environment, if you can live to the best of what you know, mm. your children catch that because it's caught, it's not taught. Is it important not to ever put the other parent down? It's fundamental. Absolutely fundamental. So, yes, we know that you might not like them anymore. You know that you want to badmouth them, but not in front of the children. You know, not in front of your family that are struggling with it as well. You be that example of how to parent positively yeah. and just be it. How do you get that other difficult parent that you loathe mm -hmm. to cooperate? Do you give them the book? What do you do? Well, some do. <laughs> some that worse? Some post it. Yeah, it does. The Surprisingly, it does. does. Parenting with the X Factor. Yeah. There you go. So you give people this book? We do. Some people actually come into the foundation and they ask that we will post it anonymously to their ex. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sending someone life boy Absolutely. Um, yeah. it, underarm stuff. Yeah, and they and smell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're happy doing any of that, but the, the thing is, is that normally they see that the other ex is the problem. You see, that's normally the argument, but mm. my ex is such the problem. Yes, it's not me. Exactly. And so what we're doing here is we're giving a neutral reference where people can read it, they can discuss it, and then they can start working out, oh, okay, so maybe it's not all them. Maybe it's something that I have to look at. Because that's a fair call. It's not always good. Like, you could have two very difficult parents who both want to make each other's life yeah. a misery. Well, also, too, it sometimes isn't so much that you're wanting to make your ex's life a misery. It's actually that you're wanting to protect your children and do the best mm. for the children because that's ultimately what a parent is really wanting to do. And you just fundamentally disagree with what your ex is doing. So when you're in that scenario, it's not saying what my ex is doing is right or making it wrong. It's actually saying how do you deal with that and how do you give the children the tools to then know what is best for them? 
I think a lot of it is around also is the way you talk about the breakup with kids. And you've got a, a mm. nine, I suppose some would say it was a euphemism, but it's a way that you describe the broken family as opposed to broken family. Because if a kid's hearing um, from a broken family, it's very negative, isn't it? Totally. And that's why we came up with the term complex family. Because anyone who's been through this knows that it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Everything's complicated once you've been through a divorce with children. And so complex family, it's neutral. It just describes what it is and children are not disadvantaged anymore. It's just complicated, and they can work that. You've got three kids of your own, you were in this position specifically yourself. Yeah. How have using these techniques helped you, and how have your kids turned out? They're stunning. <laughs> <laughs> They're brilliant. They're teenagers. I'm coming up 12 years of having been um, gone through this myself. And so the children, we've tried all sorts of different techniques and routines with the kids. And they are three stunning teenagers who love both parents and step parents. And so the your ex was willing to cooperate with your techniques? Uh, some. Him. Yeah, some. He has a natural desire to always want to raise good children as well. Mm. And so some things we fundamentally disagree on, and then other things we can agree on. But the agreement between us is that the children matter. And, and so that's what is important. And that's the fundamental thing, is yeah. that it's what is best for the kids. Let's talk very briefly about what we're going to see in the next couple of weeks in this series. Yeah. Next, next week, what are we going to be doing? We're going to talk about routines. So this is what people do with custody. We're going to work out how you don't need to go to court to work out who goes where, when. Right. And really just strip away and make it really simple for people to actually work out that children matter wherever they are. And then after that, what are the other segments? We'll do to money. Do? Money. So you know, lovely discussions on money because it's and a water. really big one and um, a lot of fighting over that one. And then uh, I think these conversations that we're doing at the moment with answering some of the big questions that will come in after that. Wonderful stuff, so we'll hopefully get some feedback from the audience. Well, look, great to have you on the show, Jill. I know this is going to be a really popular segment because a lot of us are in this situation, mm -hmm. and the better we can handle it, and the less money we have to spend on the $400 an hour lawyers, no offence exactly. lawyers, the better. Thank you so much. Thank you. And as Jill mentioned, she's going to be back next week to talk about school holidays, which is a tricky time for most separated parents. In the meantime, you'll find out more about the Complex Family Foundation on our website and her book, of course.